God rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ the Savior was born on Christmas Day to save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. From God our Heavenly Father a blessed angel came, and unto certain shepherds all tidings of this name. How glad in Bethlehem was born the Son of God by name. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Away in a manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head. The stars in the sky looked down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay. The cattle are lowing, the baby he wakes. The little Lord Jesus no crying he makes. I love the Lord Jesus, look down from the sky and stay by my side until morning is nigh. Oh, come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. Sing choirs of angels. Sing in exaltation. Sing all ye citizens. to thee be all glory given. Word of the Father, now in flesh appearing, O oh, come let us adore him, O oh, come let us adore him, O oh, come let us adore him. Jones from Church Hill Theater. When Charles Dickens presented this little story to the world almost 200 years ago, he found an instant response in the hearts of people everywhere who saw in it their favorite fictional chronicle of what Christmas is and what Christmas means to all the simple people of the earth. From the day of its first printing, families have been innumerable in which there has remained unbroken the tradition that the reading of A Christmas Carol 
was an item indispensable to a proper observance of the most important of days. It is the American way, as we know, to establish traditions quickly where popular instinct and sentiment pronounce them sound. And so it is that today, in the midst of a multitude of stresses, tensions, and anxieties, there is, I think, in all America, nothing more eagerly awaited, more firmly rooted in the hearts of the theater family that numbers millions than a performance of A Christmas Carol. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother and child, holy infant so tender and mild. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So, Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth to Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room for them at the inn. And there were shepherds, living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel, an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and, and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Marley was dead, to begin with. There's no doubt whatever about that. The register of his burial was signed by the clergyman, the clerk, the undertaker, and the chief mourner. Scrooge signed it, and Scrooge's name was good upon change for anything he chose to put his hand to. Old Marley... Scrooge murdered his wife. Of course he did. Scrooge and Marley were partners for I don't know how many years. Ah, but he was a tight-fisted hand at the grindstone was Scrooge. A squeezing, wrenching, grasping, scraping, clutching, covetous old sinner. And, once upon a time, of all the good days in the year, on Christmas Eve, old Scrooge sat busy in his counting house, a grim, cheerless place if ever there was one. The door of Scrooge's counting house was open that he might keep his eye upon his clerk, Bob Cratchit, who in a cold and dismal little cell beyond worked at his ledgers. Mighty 20, 21, 22, very gentle men have gone on you dismay. 23, 26, 29 will carry to Christmas Day. Seventeen, thirteen, seventeen, seven. Bob Cratchit! Uh, yes, Mr. Scrooge. Stop that infernal caterwauling. Uh, yes, sir. Nine, fifteen, Singing seventeen. their idiotic Christmas carols at me very door. Go on! Get away from me door! Aww. Go somewhere else and bellow your blasted carols, or I'll give you... Why, Governor? It's an old custom at Christmas. At Christmas time, you know. Yes, and I don't want any of your old costumes. Take your fellow fools and go away. Christmas. Blah. 
Right, sir. Merry Christmas anyway, sir. Ah. Now, you get that letter from Higgins and Blackstone, Cratchit. And then I want you to finish posting this ledger. And after that, you can pop over to Partigil's and tell Ephraim Partigil you've come after the 17 shillings and six pence he's owed me since Michaelmas. And will you tell him I shall have a constable over there if he doesn't pay up at once? Mr. Partigil's wife has been ill, sir. Well, what do I care about his wife? I want me 17 and six. Uh, I just thought it being Christmas, sir. Uh, Christmas? Mm. Christmas? You mention that word to me once more, Bob Cratchit, and I'll... A Merry Christmas, Uncle. A Merry Christmas, Bob. Merry Christmas, Mr. Fred. God save you, Uncle. Ah, humbug. Christmas, a humbug, Uncle. Now, I'm sure you don't mean that. I mean just that. Exactly that. Merry Christmas. I mean, what right have you to be merry? Uh, what reason have you? You're poor enough. Well, what right do you have to be dismal about Christmas, Uncle? You're rich enough. Bah. Now, Uncle, don't be cross. Well, what else can I be when I live in such a world of fools? Um, what's Christmas to you but a time for paying bills without money? <laughs> Merry Christmas! A time for finding yourself a year older and not an hour richer. If I could work my will, every idiot who goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips be boiled with his own pudding and buried with a stake of holly through his heart. He should. Uncle! <laughs> now, nephew, you keep Christmas in your own way and let me keep it in mine. Keep it? But you don't keep it, Uncle. Well, let me leave it alone, then. I mean, what do you want? A Christmas gift, I've no doubt. I came to wish you a Merry Christmas, Uncle. A Merry Christmas? Uh, much good may Christmas do you. <laughs> much good it ever has done you. There are many things from which I derive good by which I have not profited materially, I dare say, Uncle. Christmas among the rest, but have always thought Christm of Christmas time as a good time, a kind, forgiving, charitable, pleasant time. And therefore, Uncle, though it has never put a scrap of gold or silver in my pocket, I believe it has done me good and will do me good, and I say God bless it. God bless Christmas! Hurrah! Let me hear another sound out of you there, Bob Cratchit, and you'll keep your Christmas by losing your situation. As to you, nephew, I wonder you don't go into Parliament. You talk enough nonsense. Oh, don't be angry, Uncle. I want nothing from you. I ask nothing of you. Why can't we be friends? Good afternoon. I'm sorry you feel that way. Well, I tried. A Merry Christmas to you, Uncle. Good afternoon. And a Happy New Year, too. Ah, uh, Hamburg! And a Merry Christmas to you, Bob, and the missus, and to Tiny Tim. Oh, thank you, Mr. Fred. Same to you, sir. Good day, sir. Good day, Bob. <laughs> Nonsense. Twattle. Flummery. Talking of Christmas and not two sixpences to dingle together in his trousers pocket. Oh, oh, you there, Bob Cratchit. Come here. What are you doing there? I'm only putting a bit more coal in the fire, Mr. Scrooge, seeing it's so cold in there. So you put that coal back into the scuttle. A fire. A fire indeed. I can tell you that if you use coal at that rate, you and I will soon be parting company, Bob Cratchit. You understand that? <laughs> there's, there's many a young fella who'd like your situation, you know. I'm sorry, sir. Uh, my fingers were getting a little stiff with the cold. Well, then put on your mittens. Oh, there's someone at the door. Well, go on, see who it is. Uh, yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, this is the firm of uh, Scrooge and Marley? Uh, yes, sir. I should like to see the head of the firm, if I may. Oh, very good, sir. Well, what is it? A uh, gentleman to see you, Mr. Scrooge. Huh? Have I the pleasure of addressing Mr. Scrooge or Mr. Marley? Uh, Marley's been dead these seven years tonight. I'm screwed. Uh, well, now, uh, Mr. Scrooge, uh, at this season of the year, it's, it's only fitting that we who are more fortunate should raise a fund for, to buy the poor some meat and drink and means of warmth. Uh, you may not believe it, sir, but many thousands are now in want of uh, common necessities. Ah. And hundreds of thousands are in want of the simplest comforts. Ah, are there no prisons? Uh, well, th th there are plenty and of prisons, And the workhouses, sir. are they still in operation, I trust? 
I wish I could say they are not, but they are, sir. Oh, the treadmill and the poor law are in full vigor, then. Both very busy, sir. Ah, well, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> I was afraid from what you said at first that something had occurred to stop them in their useful course. No, sir. All these institutions that you mention are flourishing, but nevertheless, it's nevertheless true that some additional provision for the poor and the destitute m must be made. Oh. Uh, a few of us, upon change, are endeavoring to raise such a fund, uh, you see, and uh, what shall I put you down for? Nothing. Oh, I see. Uh, uh, you wish to, to be anonymous, sir. I wish to be left alone. I don't make merry myself at Christmas time, and I can't afford to help make a lot of idle people merry. I help to support the establishments that take care of the poor. They cost enough. Let those who are badly off go there. Many can't go there, sir, and, and, and many would rather die. Well, then my advice to them is to do so and decrease the surplus population. Besides, I've only your word for it that all of this is so. It's the truth, Mr. Scrooge. Well, so be it then. It's not my business. It's enough for a man to understand his own business and not to interfere with other people's. Mine occupies me constantly. Good afternoon, sir. I, I quite understand, Mr. Scrooge. Uh, good afternoon. Cratchit, show this gentleman out. Yes, sir. Uh, this way, sir, please. Sir, I couldn't help but overhearing. I should like to contribute tuppence. Cratchit! Uh, yes, sir. It isn't much, but it's all I can afford. But there are others in worse situation than I. You're a generous fellow. I, I wish I might say so of your employer. Cratchit! Yes, sir. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Cratchit! Uh, Merry Christmas. Uh, Merry Christmas. Uh, yes, sir. Close the door. Twenty-four, thirty-one, one carry three. A new scarlet tippet for Tiny Tim. A comb for Martha. Thirty-three, uh, three and carry the three. A hair ribbon for Belinda. Uh, four, seven, twelve, fifteen. Catch it. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Well, it's too late to have you go to Partigill's. He'll be closed up for Christmas like these other fools. We may as well close up the place now. Uh, yes, sir. It is getting a little dark. Hard to see the figures. I, I suppose you'll want the entire day tomorrow? If it's quite convenient, sir. It's not convenient, then it's not fair either. But I suppose I can't do anything about it. <laughs> and if, if I was to stop half a crown of your wages, you'd think yourself very ill-used, I'll be bound. Uh, well, sir, yeah, I... yeah, but you don't think me ill-used when I pay a day's wages for no work. Well, it's only once a year, sir. Once a year, once a year, indeed. A fine excuse for picking a man's pocket every 25th of December. But I suppose there's no good talking. You must have the whole day. Well, well, see that you're here all the earlier the next morning. You understand? Oh, I will, sir. I will indeed. Good night, sir, and Merry Christmas. Bah. Merry Christmas. Bah. The office was closed in a twinkling, and Bob Cratchit, with the long ends of his white comforter dangling below his waist, for he boasted no great coat, went down a slide on Corn Hill twenty times in honour of its being Christmas Eve, and then ran home to Camden Town as hard as he could pelt to play with his family at Blindman's Bluff. Scrooge, on the other hand, took his melancholy dinner in his usual melancholy tavern, having read all the newspapers and spent the rest of the evening with his banker's book, went to his dismal house. Darkness is cheap, and Scrooge liked it. The yard was so dark that even Scrooge, who knew its every stone, had to grope with his hands through the fog and the frost to find the door. Scrooge walked through his rooms to see that all was right. Sitting room, bedroom, lumber room, all as they should be. Nobody under the table, nobody under the sofa, nobody under the bed, nobody in the closet, 
closed the door, he locked himself in, he double locked himself in, and took off his cravat, put on his dressing gown and slippers and his nightcap, and sat down before the fire to take his gruel. sworn I saw old... Uh, humbug. Uh, Marley's been dead these seven years. Humbug. All humbug. Uh, 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 what I need is a good night's... Uh, 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 what's that? Uh, someone's in the wine cellar. Uh, 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 but the, the door the locks in and double locks. Uh, uh, something is it, coming. Something is it, 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 it is coming closer outside my door. I, I won't believe it. <laughs> it's humbug still. Ebenezer Scrooge. Ebenezer Scrooge. Ah, Marley. What? Oh, 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 no. What do you want with me? I want much of you, Ebenezer. <laughs> Who are you? Oh, 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 you're very particular for a ghost. <laughs> All right, then. Uh, who are you? I, I go to Ocker. Jacob Marley. Jacob Marley. <laughs> but, but you're dead. You died seven years ago. Seven years ago this very night. And you are a ghost, then. But then, Ebenezer, don't you believe in me? I do not. Yes, yes, <laughs> because a little thing affects him. <laughs> a slight disorder of the stomach makes him cheats. <laughs> you, you can't be a ghost. You may be an undigested bit of beef, or a blot of mustard, or a crumb of cheese, a, a, a fragment of an underdone potato. <laughs> there may be more gravy than grave about you, <laughs> whatever you are. Ha, ha, humbug. <laughs> I tell you, humbug. I do, do believe in you. You are a ghost, Jacob. Thank you. But why? Well, why do you walk the earth, Jacob? Why do you come to me? To be quiet of every man. There's a spirit within him. He walks about with his fellow men and travels far and wide. But this is what it cannot share. There's neither here nor no. But tell me, Jacob, uh, wh what is that chain you wear around you? It is a chain I forged in life. I make it link by link, yard by yard, by my own free will. It has happened strangely, Ebenezer. Oh. Cash boxes, keys and padlocks, ledgers and purses. Jacob, uh, speak comfort to me, Jacob. I have none to give. I cannot rest. I cannot stay. I cannot linger. Weary journeys lie before me. Uh, you travel fast? Yes, Ebenezer, on the wings of the wind. Ah, for seven years dead and traveling all the time. Seven years, Ebenezer. Seven years of remorse. But you were always a good man of business, Jacob. Business? Uh, my, my business? Mankind was my business. 
my business. Come with me. Come with me. Come with me. Come with all my business. The dreams of my dreams. Look. And the drop of water in the contemplative ocean of my dreams. Well, Jacob, Jacob, now, don't take on so now, Jacob. I want to listen to you, Jacob. Now, uh, go on, Jacob. Now, but speak to me, but, but don't be so flowery. Yes, 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 Jacob. Yes. You always were a good friend to me, Jacob. Thanks, Jacob. But, 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 but go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. How shall I escape? Oh. Well, I, I'm afraid, Jacob. You will be haunted by two spirits. Well, is that the only chance and hope, Jacob? It's the only chance and hope. Well, then I think I'd rather not. What other is it? You cannot hope to shun the path I tread. Expect the first tomorrow, when the bell tolls one. Uh, couldn't I take him all at once and, and have it over, Jacob? Ebenezer, look that for your own sake. You remember what has passed between us. Remember, when the bell tolls one, look for the first spirit. Miley! Jacob Miley! Scrooge awoke. He was lying on his bed, fully dressed. Suddenly, the curtains of his bed were drawn aside, and Scrooge found himself face to face with the unearthly visitor who drew them. As close to it as I am now to you, and I am standing in the spirit at your elbow. It was a strange figure, like a child, yet not so like a child as like an old woman. Its hair, which hung about its neck and down its back, was white as if with age, and yet the face had not a wrinkle in it, and the tenderest bloom was on the skin. Ebenezer Scrooge. Uh, who, who's that? Ebenezer Scrooge, I have come for you. You? Uh, are, are, are you the spirit who, who's coming with what told me? I am that spirit. Well, who? What are you? I am the ghost of Christmas past. Long past? No, your past. Uh, but uh, what do you want of me? Uh, what brings you here to haunt me? Your welfare, Ebenezer Scrooge. Rise and walk with me. Oh, no, 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 not out of that window. Well, uh, well, I can't do that. I'll fall down. I'm not a spirit. I'm mortal, and I'll fall Bear but a touch of my hand upon your heart, and ye shall be upheld in more than this. Come, follow me. <laughs> It's become of the city, and and there, 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 there's snow upon the ground. Where are we? These are the shadows of the things that have been. You recognize this countryside? Oh, oh, <laughs> I know every inch of it, every rock, every tree. On that bleak building over there? Ah, that building. <laughs> I was a boy there, yes. I went to school in that horrible place. Do you recollect that path? <laughs> I could walk it blindfold. <laughs> Strange. You should have forgotten it so many years. Come, let us go closer. Mm, look through the window into that cold, barren room. What do you see, Ebenezer Scrooge? I see a boy. 
a solitary child, neglected by his family, alone. Yeah, yeah. I know this boy. Oh. oh, I was so lonely. Poor boy. Your lip is, is trembling, Scrooge. What is that on your cheek? Oh, it's nothing. Nothing at all. I wish I... Uh, ah, it's too late now. What's the matter? Uh, nothing. Nothing. Uh, the waifs came to me door singing Christmas carols last night, and there was a, a boy like that among them. A poor, pale, thin little boy in a ragged coat. I should like to have, have given him something, that's all. Is that all? Come, Ebenezer Scrooge, let us see another Christmas. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day. Do you know this place, Ebenezer Scrooge? No, no, no. Oh, this, this, this is the counting house where I was apprenticed. Uh, it's me old master. Uh, bless his heart, old Hizzywig. Me master, alive again. And hosting one of his Christmas parties. <laughs> Pick your partners. Oh, listen to him. Cork's group. Thread the needle and back to your places. Ah, the embers, the equipment. Oh, poor dear, 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 dear. Uh, yes, and look. Oh, there's Mrs. Fezzy with herself, looking younger than any of them. And the tables, all loaded with roast and cider, mince, pie and beer. Oh, what a jolly time we, we used to have. That carefree young man with the light heart and the gay smile. Do you recognize him? Yes, yes, yes. Merciful heaven. How happy I was then. A small matter for old Fezziwig to make those silly folks so full of joy. A small matter. A small indeed. Isn't it? He has spent only a few pounds of your mortal money. Is that so much that he deserves praise? Oh, oh it's not that. It's not that spirit. Old Fezziwig has the power to make us happy or unhappy or to make our service light or heavy. His power lies in words and looks and in things so tiny that it is impossible to count him up. <laughs> the happiness he gives is quite as great as if it cost him. What is the matter? Oh, there is nothing. Uh, nothing at all, spirit. Oh, something, I think. No, no. Speak. Uh, I, well, well, only the... It is just that I should like to be able to say a word or two to my clerk, Bob Cratchit. That's all. Well, my time grows short, and we have yet another journey to make. Well, where now? Come. This is our last visit to the past, Ebenezer. Here, in this little room, with a fair young girl by your side. Do you recognize yourself, Ebenezer? Oh, no, 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 no. S spare me this. Oh, you're older now, a man in the prime of your life. Your face has begun to wear the signs of care and avarice. Your eyes are greedy, the eager, restless eyes of a miser. No, 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 please. Oh, she knows it, too. That girl by your side, there are tears in her eyes. It matters little to you? Very little, I know that. Belle, have I changed towards you? When we were engaged, we were both poor. Was it better then, better to be poor? Better at least to be happy. You're changed. You were another man then. I was a boy. You blame me because I've grown wiser. Have I ever tried to break our engagement? In words, no, never. In what then? In a changed nature, in an altered spirit, in everything that made my love of any value in your sight. So I release you from your promise. Belle. Oh, at first it may cause you pain to lose me, a very brief pain. 
but soon it will be dim, like a half-remembered dream, an unprofitable dream, and you will be glad to be awake from such a dream. May you be happy in the life you have chosen, Ebenezer, for the love of whom you once loved. That's enough. Show me no more. Take me home. These were shadows of the things that have been. That they are what they are. Do not blame me. No. No more. No more. One shadow more. Come. Do you see this man, Ebenezer Scrooge? This man might have been you. And the woman beside him, your wife. And that girl. That girl might have been your daughter, Ebenezer Scrooge. She might have called you father. She might have been a springtime in the haggard winter of your life. Spirit, let me go. Show me no more. Listen now while they speak, Ebenezer. Belle, I saw an old friend of yours today. Who was it? Guess. How can I? Oh, I know. Mr. Scrooge. Mr. Scrooge it was. The past is off his window. It, it wasn't shuttered, and there was a candle inside, so I couldn't help seeing him. His, his partner, Marley, lies at the point of death, I hear. And there Scrooge sat, all alone, quite alone in the world, I do believe. Spirit, spirit, I, I can't bear any more. Le leave me, haunt me no more. Take me back, take me back.
On the stroke of one, Scrooge awakened suddenly and sat bolt upright in his own bed. He remembered the words of Marley's ghost and wondered from which direction the second spectre would appear. At that moment, nothing between a baby and a rhinoceros would have astonished him very much. Now, being prepared for almost anything, he was not by any means prepared for nothing. And, consequently, when no shape appeared, he was taken with a violent fit of trembling. Five minutes, ten minutes, a quarter of an hour went by, yet nothing came. Then, as he sat in his bed, he became aware, gradually, of a great blaze of ruddy light, which seemed to shine upon him from the adjoining room. He got up softly and shuffled in his slippers to the door. It was his own sitting room, no doubt about that, but it had undergone a surprising transformation. The walls and ceiling were so hung with living green that it looked a perfect grove, from every part of which bright gleaming berries glistened and such a mighty blaze went roaring up the chimney as had ever been known in Scrooge's time, or for many and many a winter season gone. Heaped up on the floor to form a kind of throne were turkeys, geese, game, poultry, great joints of meat, suckling pigs, long reeds of sausages, mince pies, plum puddings, barrels of oysters, red-hot chestnuts, and seething bowls of punch that made the chamber dim with their delicious steam. In easy state upon this couch, there sat a jolly giant, glorious to see, who bore a glowing torch, in shape not unlike Plenty's horn and held it up, high up to shed its light on Scrooge, as he came peeping round the door. Come in, Ebenezer Scrooge! <laughs> Come in and know me better, man! <laughs> I am the ghost of Christmas present. Look upon me! You've never seen the like of me before! <laughs> Its light pours into the homes of rich and poor alike. Good. Spirit, take me where you will. Last time I went against me will and learned a lesson which is, is working now. If you have anything to teach me, will you make me stop it quietly? Touch my robe, Ebenezer Scrooge. Touch my robe. An humble dwelling in an humble street. Oh, don't worry, no. And yet, there is happiness there. So who? So who are these people? Who's that woman? <laughs> uh, these are the family of your clerk, Bob Cratchit. <laughs> His wife, dressed in a twice-turned gown, but oh, brave in ribbons, lay in the table for their Christmas dinner. And there... Assisting her is her daughter Belinda, and the young man oh, with a fork in the pudding. Oh, that's Master Peter Cratchit, and the two little Cratchits. Listen, Scrooge. No. 
down, cool them down. There's enough for everybody. There's plenty. Stuffing and dressing and plum pudding for all of you. Martha, you take care of Tiny Tim. Yes, Mother. You see that he eats plenty. He must get tall and well. Now, sit down, sit down, everyone. Ah, now, my dears, shall we say grace? Dear Lord. Spirit, tell me if Tiny Tim will live. Oh, I see a vacant seat in the poor chimney corner and a crutch without an owner, carefully preserved. Oh, no, no. Mm. No, no, kind spirit. Say he'll be spared. Say he'll live. If these shadows remain unaltered by the future, Ebenezer, the child will die. Amen. 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 And now, my dears, with such a dinner, a toast. A Merry Christmas to us all, and God bless us. Amen. God bless us, everyone. And now to Mr. Scrooge. Ah! I give you a toast to Mr. Scrooge, the founder of the feast. The founder of the feast, indeed, who pays you all of 15 shillings a week. Now, I wish I had him here. I'd give him a piece of my mind to feast on, and I hope he'd have a good appetite for it. Oh, my dear, the children, Christmas Day. Well, it should be Christmas Day, I'm sure, on which one drinks to the health of such an odious, stingy, unfeeling man as Mr. Scrooge. You know he is, Bob. Nobody knows it better than you, poor my, fellow. My dear, Christmas Day. I'll drink to his health for your sake and the day's. Not for his. A long life to him. A merry Christmas and a happy new year. He'll be very merry and very happy, I have no doubt. And I say, God bless him too, Mother, and everyone. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. There was nothing of high mark in all this. They were not a handsome family, these Cratchits. They were not well-dressed. Their shoes were far from being waterproof. Their clothes were scanty and had known very likely the insides of a pawnbroker's. But they were happy, grateful, pleased with one another and contented with the time. When at last they faded, Scrooge had his eye upon them, and especially on Tiny Tim, until the last. <laughs> Many calls Scrooge made that night with the ghost of Christmas present. Down among the miners they went, who labored in the bowels of the earth, and out to sea among the sailors at their watch. Dark, gloomy, ghostly figures in their several stations. Much they saw, and far they went, and many places they visited, but always with a happy end. The spirit stood beside sick beds, and they were cheerful. On foreign lands, and they were close at home by poverty, and it was rich. In almshouse, hospital, and jail, where vain man in his little brief authority had not made fast the door and barred the spirit out, the spirit left his blessing. It was a long night, if it was only a night, and it was strange, too, that while Scrooge remained unaltered in his outward form, the ghost grew older, clearly older. My time upon this globe is very brief, Ebenezer. It ends tonight. Tonight? Tonight, at midnight. Hark! The hour has come. Oh, no, 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 not yet, not yet. Oh, there, there, there are still more things that I wish to learn. These you will learn from still another spirit. Still another spirit, Ebenezer. Oh. 
looked about him for the ghost. It had vanished, and he found himself once more in his bed, in his dressing gown, in his nightcap on his head. He heard the clock strike, and then he remembered the prediction of old Jacob Marley, and lifting up his eyes, beheld the third spirit. A solemn phantom, shrouded in black, draped and hooded, coming towards him slowly and silently, like a mist along the ground. I know you. You, you are the ghost of Christmas yet to come. You'll show me the shadows of things that have not happened, but will happen the time before us. Well, answer me, spirit, a ghost of the future. I fear you more than any specter I've seen. Yet I know your purpose is to do me good, and as I hope to live to be another man from what I was, well, lead on. Lead on. Tonight's waning fast and time's precious. Spirit, why, why have you brought me here again? Here to Bob Cratchit's home. But it's not the same. Why is it so quiet? So very quiet here. Mother, mother, please. Oh, my son. My little son. Dear, dear. I loved him so. Oh, mother, dear, you mustn't. It's almost time for father to be home. Don't let him see you crying. Yes. <laughs> yes, mother. He's late tonight. He walks slower than he used to, and yet I've known him to walk very fast indeed, with tiny Tim on his shoulder. So have I, Mother. But he was light to carry, and his father loved him so, that it was no trouble, no trouble. Bob. Good evening, my dear. You're late, Bob. Yes, I'm, I'm sorry, my dear. I went to the churchyard today. I wish you could have gone with me. It would have done your heart good to see how sweet and green a place it is. But you'll see it often. I promised him. Yes, I promised Tiny Tim. We'd walk there on a Sunday. Father, dear. It's God's will, Bob. I'm trying to understand it, my dear. My son. My little son. Tiny Tim. And I loved him so. Oh, that's cruel. Cruel. 
Well, spirit, uh, can't you give me one ray of hope that I, I may change all that, that, that tiny Tim may live? Where are you taking me now? Here? On a common street? Spirit, what is there for me to learn here? Who, who are those men? I don't know much about it either way. I only know he's dead. When did he die? Uh, last night, I believe. It's likely to be a very cheap funeral, for upon my life, I don't know anybody to go to it. Suppose we make up a party and volunteer. I don't mind going if lunch is provided. <laughs> Come to think of it, Albert, I was his best friend. What? We used to nod to each other when we met in the street. <laughs> well, spirit, help me. Uh, who is this man that died? Uh, is there no one to mourn the poor creature? No one to follow him to the grave? Uh, or perhaps they'll give him a green grave at least, like poor tiny Tim. Uh, per perhaps... Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day. Well, where are we now? Oh, merciful heaven. A churchyard. Overrun by grass and weeds, choked with too much burying. What a desolate lonely, crumbling gravestones. Or a spirit, before I draw nearer to that gravestone, answer me one question. Uh, are, are these the shadows of things that will be, or are, are they shadows of things that may be only? Huh? Well, will, will, will you not speak to me? Uh, spirit, well, well, what is that grave to which you point? Ah, oh, now I see. Uh-huh. Well, then, what is writing on the stone? The name on the gravestone. Ebenezer Scrooge. Ebenezer Scrooge? Oh, no, 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 spirit, no, 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 no. <laughs> Hear me, I, I, I'm not the man that I was. I mean, why show me this if I am past all hope? Uh, tell me that I can change these dreadful shadows uh, you've shown me by an altered life. I, I'll honor Christmas in my heart. I'll, I'll, I'll try to keep it all the year. I'll live in the past, the present, and the future, and I'll not shut out the lessons that they teach. Uh, tell me, spirit. Uh, oh, go on, tell me. Uh, tell me that I can sponge away the writing on that, that stone. Spirit, I beg you. Spirit, I beg you! Spirit, I promise, I promise on my knees, I promise. The cross was cruel when a poor man came in sight, gathering winter fuel. Island night, oh. Prepare him rule 
and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. He rules the world with truth and grace, and makes his nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love, and wonders of his love, and wonders, wonders of his love. I promise, I promise. Right. Oh, what is this? What is me on drape? Oh, I'm home in my own bed, in my own room. Oh, and the sun, the sun shining. It's clear, it's bright, but no fog. Oh, what a beautiful day. Oh, glorious, glorious. Hey, boy! Oh, boy! Yes, sir? What? What's today? What's that, sir? What day is it, me fine fellow? Today? Why, it's Christmas Day. <laughs> oh, Christmas Day! <laughs> I haven't missed it! Oh, the spirits have done it all in one night! All in one night! Heaven be praised! How's that, sir? Oh, no, listen, my lad. Uh, you know where the poulterer is in the next street? I should say I do. Uh, an intelligent boy, a remarkable boy. Uh, tell me, do you know if they sold the prize turkey that was hanging in the window? The one as big as me. <laughs> oh, what a delightful boy. Hey, it's a pleasure to talk to you. Yes, my book. It's hanging in there now, sir. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, go down with you and tell them to send it to Bob Cratchit and his family on Broad Street. And mind you, they're not to know who paid for it. Uh, go along. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Here, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Here's half a crown for you, for your trouble. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And a Merry Christmas, sir. <laughs> and a Merry Christmas to you, my boy. Oh, 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 I don't know what to do. I'm as light as a feather, I'm as happy as an angel, and as merry as a schoolboy. <laughs> Merry Christmas! <laughs> a Merry Christmas to everybody! A Happy New Year to all the world! Oh, 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 oh. My dear sir, how do you do? I, I beg your pardon. No, no, well, you, sir, aren't you the gentleman who came to me office in regard to that charity? Why, yes, sir. A Merry Christmas to you. Of, uh, yes, sir. Well, I, allow me to ask your pardon, sir, if you have the goodness to accept. Uh, I prefer to whisper this. What? But, Lord bless me, my, my dear Mr. Scrooge, oh. I... Are you serious? If you please. Now, not a farthing less. <laughs> a great many back payments are included in it, I assure you. <laughs> Will you do me that favor? Well, my dear sir, I, I don't know what to say to so much minute. So no, I, no, 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 don't say anything, please. Come and see me. Will you, will you please come and see me? I will. I will indeed. <laughs> oh, thank you. I am much obliged to you. I thank you 50 times. Bless you. Merry Christmas. Next morning, Scrooge was early at his office. He went early for a reason. If he could only be there first and catch Bob Cratchit coming late, that was the thing he'd set his heart upon. And he did it. Yes, he did. The clock struck nine. No Bob. A quarter past. No Bob. Scrooge sat with his door wide open that he might see him come in. And at last he came. His hat was off before he opened the door, his comforter too. He was on his stool in a jiffy, driving away with his pen, as if he were trying to overtake nine o'clock. Uh, Fifteen and twenty-one, six and carry the one, twenty-four and carry the two, uh, thirty-one and eight and nine and... Uh, Hello, are you Cratchit? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, well, step this way, Cratchit, if you please. Cratchit, uh, what do you mean by coming in at this time of day? Why, I am very sorry, sir. I am behind my time. Oh, you are. Yes, yes, I think you are. Uh, it's only once a year, Mr. Scrooge. It shall not be repeated. I was 
making rather merry yesterday, sir. Uh, I tell you what, my friend. It, I'll not stand for this sort of thing any longer. And therefore, Bob Cratchit, I'm about to raise your salary. Mr. Scrooge, are you quite yourself, sir? <laughs> no, 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 no. Thank heaven, I'm not quite myself. Merry Christmas, Bob. <laughs> Merry Christmas, my good fellow. A merrier Christmas than I've given you in many a year. I shall raise your salary and we'll see what we can do for Tiny Tim and the rest of your family. Huh? <laughs> we, we, we will discuss it this afternoon over a Christmas bowl of smoking bishop. Bob, come on, make up that fire. Make it up and, and, and buy another coal scuttle before you doth another eye. Bob, cut it. Scrooge was better than his word. He did it all and infinitely more. To Tiny Tim, who did not die, he was a second father. He became as good a friend, as good a master, and as good a man as the good old city knew, or any other good old city, town, or borough in the good old world. Some people laughed to see the alteration in him, but he let them laugh and little heeded them. His own heart laughed. That was quite enough for him. He had no further intercourse with spirits, but lived upon the total abstinence principle ever afterwards. And it was always said of him that he knew how to keep Christmas well if any man alive possessed the knowledge. May that be truly said of us, of all of us. And so, as Tiny Tim observed, God bless us, every one. God bless you, merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Saviour was born on Christmas Day. To save us all from Satan's power, we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. This is Kathy Jones from Church Hill Theatre. We hope our presentation of A Christmas Carol has brightened your Christmas season with its true meaning. Actors, actors, directors, crew, and the entire Churchill Theater family, we wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We hope to see you again soon. Good night. Merry, Merry Christmas! Christmas. Here we come a wanting so fair to be seen. Love and joy come to you, come to you your heart so sweet. And God bless you and send you a happy new year. And God send you a happy new year. We are not any better than to go from door to door. We are your neighbor's children whom you have seen before. Love and joy come to you. And to you your hopes are true, and God bless you and send you a happy new year, and God send you a happy.